Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Lucy says, are probiotics, fish oil, and uh, broccoli extract effective for kids with ASD? My kiddo is very extremely picky with food. Are there supplements recommended for helping the redox in yeah. kids with ASD? Yeah. There's a Thank lot you so much there. for asking that. That's a fantastic question. Yeah. And I want to say, and this is good, you know, I'm saying it to you, but I, I'm listening to it myself as well. Um, you, I really, truly recommend that every parent, if you can, consult with a dietitian or a nutritionist, if you can, because there is so much there. Um, in general, I would always tell parents, yeah, fish oil is fantastic for everyone, including our kids. There's specific types of fish oil that will be more beneficial, but more for for their brain activity, not, not necessarily redox. When you have redox, you need to figure out what's causing the redox. Like why is the child having uh, issues with digestion to begin with? It's gonna be lots of different things, right? I mean, at this point, there could just be, uh, your child could have an intolerance or an allergy or just inflammation due to some prior infection or not enough bacteria or bacteria in the small intestine or, I mean, I could go on and on and on. There's so many different GI issues that could be causing redox. It is important to assess first. It really is like, because that kind of tells you the what to do. Um, probiotics in general are good, except for if you have SIBO, for instance, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth, a particular types of probiotics could make things worse. So it really is about finding out the cause first. And um, as I said, if you really, if you have a hard time connecting with a nutritionist or a dietitian, I mean, there are some f amazing people. Julie Matthews is, is a very, very fantastic expert. I highly recommend her. She has a wonderful website as well, uh, Nourishing Hope. Yes. And she has all kinds of information on there. We should get her back on the show again. Absolutely. She's just so smart. You can, we should really should, like we should ask yes. her all these questions because yes. she's so fantastic at that. And she will help you with a bunch of different ideas. Just reading her material will be helpful. She has courses that you can take online. She has a lot of good stuff going on. Um, but all that is, if it's hard for you to even connect with a nutritionist, then you can start with a home uh, sensi food sensitivity kit. Because to begin with, it, you should find out if your child is sensitive to certain things. That has a bigger response level, getting rid of things that we're not able to break down, has a much bigger effect than adding things like probiotics, etc. If you can eliminate the things that the child is reacting to or not able to digest properly, you'll get rid of inflammation gradually. And that's the key to the whole thing. There we go. Uh, I was looking up because uh, one of you asked, what was the name of the book that I was talking about? It's called Breaking the Vicious Cycle. And... Um, it's available on Amazon. It's called Breaking the Vicious Cycle Intestinal Health Through Diet. It's uh, by Elaine Gottschall. Oh, Elaine, um, yeah. So, oh, you know? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, I will tell you, you know, you, I think you gotta weed through what you want, but it's it's about the specific carbohydrate diet. Yeah. I do not yeah. advocate being on that for like months on end. It's hard, um, but that is actually one of the primary diets for SIBO as well. Well, there we go. But I will say that, you know, it's, I think you have to be very careful that your child doesn't go into ketosis with it. Yeah. And we were under the care of a doctor at the time, so I just want to give that little yes, asterisk. It is it. hard. Uh, but, uh, but it was so helpful. Joanny says, uh, Dr. Doreen, I have a question about food allergies. We took our 10-year-old son to the allergist, and they would only test him for environmental and said food allergies are only anaphylactic. This is a new trend. I just ran into this myself. Okay, okay. So no need to test for them. 
which is redonkulous to me. It's only anaphylactic, <sighs> which means you can die from it, so we're not going to test for it. It makes me crazy. Well, what they're saying is that all, it's not really an allergy if you just get inflammation. Exactly. It's only an allergy if you have an anaphylactic reaction. And, and I just went through this with my allergist. But anyway, okay. she says, we try GF, DF, CF. I don't know uh, what the DF is. Yeah. Dairy-free, maybe. Oh, dairy-free. Uh, I No, because, yeah. No, I don't no, know. No, no. Just I don't know. let us Tell know. Tell us now, Jen. <laughs> yeah. I, I say try because he's really fighting it now. Uh, to him, the only sign he has is loose bowel movements. But we see attention and hyperactivity. How do I get more of the testing? I'm worried there are more things we should be looking yeah. for. Yeah, order the kit. Order the food sensitivity kit. There it comes go. home. It's fantastic. You can do it at home. Yeah. And there's lots of different ones, by the way. You can select. I mean, there are ones that only measure about 100 things. There are ones that measure 300 different things. Like, they're amazing. I haven't amazing. ordered anything like this in a while. Do you remember? Do you get that from Great Labs? Or you, you? No, Amazon. Amazon. You can order okay. it online. Like, okay. they have them everywhere now. It's so easy to access these food sensitivity. Just look up food sensitivity. You'll get a million options. Okay. It's really just about... Like the cost goes up if you're looking for 300 different variants. Okay. Then it's something something around two hundred thirty dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. If you're looking for fewer things, then it's cheaper. I mean, they're amazing tests. There you go. Maggie says my ten year old son does not want to uh, try to eat foods like chips, pretzels, crackers because of the noise they make. How to train him to help him try and eat foods like these? Yeah. Wow. Th I love that question because. It just, it's a reminder of how many different things we have to think about, right? And with our Amen. kids, texture and noise, sound are important. Whereas like with us, they, they, they so, you know, like we sound, it, right? sound might bother us, but it doesn't necessarily make us avoid eating something, right? But with our kids, it's so intense. We get over it to eat the We chips. get over it, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so um, first of all, I would say, um, <laughs> how do I say this? Uh, evaluate the value of teaching him to eat things like chips, pretzels, and crackers before you dive into this. In other words, do you really want him eating chips, cr cr crackers, and pretzels? Because none of those products are going to be whole whole foods right. and none of them are going to be that good right. for him so not sure you want to go down that path right but is if you necessary? do is it necessary uh, is it better just to let him not eat those things right um and focus more on things there are other things that might be very important for him to eat that are also noisy or crunchy so you know like anything else uh you will there's multiple different things you can do. First of all, you can give him, you can help him avoid it, right? That's, let's just start with that. If you choose to, you can help him avoid it. And the way you do that is you give him headphones or earbuds, whatever you decide, he can put those on or in. These are the things I talk about. Like it really has to do with your choice of how you want your child to live. If you feel like, I, you know, I use the example of my, my husband who, when he travels, he has to have his ear um, headphones just because it reduces anxiety for him. Yeah. And it's totally fine. Right. So it, can someone who is going to go to a restaurant or eat just put in earbuds or headphones? Sure, why not? There's nothing. That's okay. He can do that as long as he has access to those things in school, let's say, during lunch or whatever it is. So he can do that and he can avoid the sound altogether. If you don't want him to avoid the sound, if you want him to learn... Then you just do it as a gradual shaping procedure. So one chip, and then he gets something that doesn't make noise. Two chips, and then he gets something that doesn't make noise. So you just gradually shape it, right? So that he ends up eating a handful of chips, and then he will get the thing that he likes or doesn't make noise and doesn't bother him. Um, and that's just it. But remember... We all have preferences in food. Not everybody likes everything, you know, so it, we should be okay with allowing our kids to have preferences as long as they get the nutritional values they need. Absolutely. And, and those items, chips, pretzels, crackers, etc., are not really providing a lot of nutritional value. They're providing a lot of carbs 
And yeah. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that yeah. for him. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we hope to see you there.